A document leaked by a Google researcher suggests that Google do not have a defensible position when it comes to artificial intelligence and large language models, and neither do OpenAI. Over the long term, the open source community is making so much progress building on top of all of these foundation large language models that Google's position as far as being an artificial intelligence leader is definitely under threat, according to this document. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Kane Sims here from VUX World, the front door to the conversational AI industry. Google, obviously, is under immense pressure to release and show the world its cards when it comes to artificial intelligence. Recent progress in the open source community has questioned whether there is any value differentiator, any value proposition in some of the work that both Google and OpenAI are doing. This is from the document itself. We aren't positioned to win this arms race and neither is OpenAI. While we've been squabbling, a third faction has been quietly eating our lunch. I'm talking, of course, about open source. Plainly put, there are, they are lapping us. Things we consider major open problems are solved and in people's hands today. The open source community has been building some incredible things on top of some of these foundation large language models. Facebook's uh, Llama model was leaked in March, and since then, the progress of building on top of that has been absolutely immense. People are running assistance on phones with no connection to the internet and able to query and utilize the large language model without an internet connection. I saw some stuff from Brian Romley, who's been deep into this stuff for a long time on Twitter, and he's got these large language models running on a Raspberry Pi hooked up to Wikipedia, so that you can ask it any question uh, that Wikipedia can answer. It's recording his conversation so he can go back and query what he said last Tuesday or whatever it might be. And so he's essentially built his own personal assistant on a Raspberry Pi with an open source large language model without the need for uh, OpenAI's APIs, without the need to even go anywhere near Google to get questions answered. The doc document goes on to say that while our models still hold a slight edge in terms of quality, the gap is closing astonishingly quickly. <laughs> open source models are faster more customizable, more private, and pound for pound more capable. They are doing things with $100, $100 and 13 billion parameters that we struggle to do with $10 million and 540 billion parameters. And they are doing so in weeks, not months. And that's what happens when you have technology available and in the hands of anybody. Developers, universities, data scientists, all these different people from all over the world are building on top of this stuff at such a pace that no one can keep up. If you look, if you just Google generative AI or you Google large language models and you search for anything to do with this technology, you will find so many solutions. Twitter is rife with people releasing new products every single week. Auto GPT, Hugging GPT, you know, all of these, vet Langchain, all of these tools are being built on top of these large language models at a pace that even an industry analyst like me struggles to keep up with. This is showing just how quickly this progress is happening. Meta's language model was leaked in March, and that has a 68% accuracy. Essentially, what this university did, or collection of universities did, is they used GPT-4 to benchmark the and grade, essentially rank, the responses that these five models have produced. It ranks, and apparently it does it fairly successfully. The link to that is here if you want to go and uh, check out how they got, went about doing this research. Lam Lama was leaked right? That had, according to GPT-4, a 68% quality score as far as the responses that it was producing to the questions that were asked. Alpaca was built on top of Llama two weeks after it was released that took that quality score to 76%. One week later, another model, Vicuna, was built on top of that, which, really, which achieved a 92% accuracy, which is almost as good as Google's BARD. Not quite as good as ChatGPT, but in three weeks, with one open source model with only 13 billion parameters, there is a model that is comparable and almost exactly matching the capabilities of BARD. BARD, a model that has been in progress for years, essentially, and has been millions of dollars spent on it. All of the top research brains in the world have been working on this kind of stuff. Now, crucially, it needs to be said that Llama is the foundation model released for Meta, which won't have just been a flash in the pan and come out of nowhere. So there would have been a good amount of work done on that initial model in the first place. The thing to pay attention to here is that when you release that model, 
others can build on top of it. They can build new ways of training it. They can build new capabilities into it. They can build new products on top of it. And therefore, all the time the model gets better because you're allowing more people to input into the quality of the model. And subsequently, this researcher at Google is saying that we have no secret sauce. Our best hope is to learn from and collaborate with what others are doing outside of Google. And it's because of that exact reason. You've got millions of people all over the world. In fact, the entire world has the ability, providing you've got the skills to build on top of these models and to utilize them. There is no way that Google could recruit enough people to be able to work on enough diverse types of projects to be able to match the progress and the pace that the open source community can work at. People will not pay for a restricted model when a free unrestricted alternatives with comparable quality are also available. Maybe people will pay for access to a restricted model. People are paying for access to ChatGPT now, which is the product, the front end of the GPT-4, GPT-3.5 models. Um, people are paying for access to OpenAI's APIs. Most of the products that you see today, like Jasper and Grammarly and these other kind of tools that are built on top of these large language models, they're all using, most of them, or in a great deal of them, are using OpenAI's APIs. And so they are paying to access these APIs at this moment. But that's mostly because ChatGPT since November has created such a mad kind of frenzy and mad hype around this kind of technology that all of a sudden people now know about OpenAI and they now know about those underlying APIs and they didn't before November. Now, people did know about that before November. GPT-3 has been available for a long time. GPT-2 has been available for even longer. And so there's been products built on top of this stuff, but it didn't quite have the hype and it didn't quite have the attention. So people are paying for access to these models. But the question, the bigger question here is, will people continue to pay for these models when more of these open source models become more readily available? Giant models are slowing us down. In the long run, the best models are the ones which can be iterated upon quickly. I think BARD is something like 540 billion parameters. Uh, GPT-3 was, or GPT-3.5 is like 178 billion parameters. Costs a hell of a lot to train, takes a long time to train. It's a huge, huge model with a whole load of complexity. Llama released from, uh, from Meta, leaked from Meta, is only 13, I say only, <laughs> as if it's a small number, 13 billion parameters. And it's achieving the same kind of results that BARD can achieve. So th the bigger isn't always better necessarily when it comes to language models. And so the question is, do you need large language models? Or do you just need a way of having a language model that you can train and customize effectively for your given use case? Keeping our technology secret was always a tenuous proposition. Google researchers are leaving for other companies on a regular cadence so we can assume that they know everything we know and will continue to for as long as that pipeline is open. But holding on to a competitive advantage in technology becomes even harder now that cutting edge research in LLMs is affordable. Research institutions all over the world are building on each other's work exploring the solution space in a breadth first way that far outstrips our own capacity and we can try and hold on tightly to our secrets while outside innovation dilutes their value or we can try and learn from each other. Inevitably, when you've got all kinds of people from across the whole world, some people are interested in fishing, some people are interested in writing, some people are interested in marketing, some people are interested in baking. All of these people are building different products and services on top of all of these different models and different research institutions all over the world are trying different ways of training it and trying different ways of screening more, squeezing more performance and accuracy out of them. There is just no way that Google can cope with that breadth of activity. Neither can OpenAI and neither can one single company. Google has always been secretive about all of its technology bad is no exception. Go back to when Amazon first released Alexa, Google released Google Assistant. In that dynamic, in that arms race as it was back then, Google were always a fast follower. Amazon Alexa would release various developer features and Google would then slowly release the same sort of features afterwards. But when it comes to the real stuff, the cutting edge stuff, the ability to have the, a large language model automatically create and manage a conversation for you, like Alexa conversations, Google was always on the fence about that. It's, it, I remember when it released or it announced rather Google Duplex and it did the exact same thing as it did with BARD. Alexa had Alexa conversations happening. Google wanted to, to make sure that the world knew that it had the same kind of technology. And so at IO 18 or 19, it showed a demonstration of Google Duplex, which on the face of it looked absolutely fantastic, but it didn't make it anywhere near production for about four years after that, or three years after that, or however long it was. And in fact, even today, it's not really widely used. It's not really widely adopted. The same things happened with BARD, where Google's kind of announced it and said, look, we've got this fantastic thing that's probably better than ChatGPT, 
but you can't use it yet. And it's kind of all this posturing that Google does quite often to try and let the world know that it's really advanced and it's got this stuff under control, doing bleeding edge kind of stuff, whereas it doesn't release anything to the public. Now, of course, there is a lot more risk in Google releasing stuff. Google has access to millions, hundreds of millions of people. The risk of Google getting something wrong is damaging to its business, given that its business is language processing fundamentally. And so it's always had this secretive kind of culture. The difference with OpenAI in this instance is that OpenAI's releasing of ChatGPT has given it access to data, 100 million people using that service every single month. That means that OpenAI get far more data, real data of how people are genuinely interacting with this thing that Google's missing out on, which means that OpenAI can then go ahead and train its models more effectively based on the context and use cases that people are really using it for, whereas BARD will struggle to do that. What this is asking, though, is whether or not that kind of position, the, the um, image that Google is portraying as being ahead of the field in this kind of uh, industry, is that actually believable now that the open source community are working on models and building models that are comparable to what Google is, is releasing? All of this talk of open source can feel unfair given OpenAI's current closed policy. Why do we have to share if they won't? But the fact of the matter is, we're already sharing everything with them in the form of a steady flow of poached senior researchers. And still we tell, until we stem that tide, secrecy is a moot point. Now, researchers and people at Google have been leaving. Uh, if you read the headlines, you'll see that people have been leaving Google. Uh, and part of it is rumored to be because of some of this secrecy uh, side of things, the way that Google's trying to keep its cards close to its chest. But what this is saying here is that keeping your cards close to your chest is, is pointless now because OpenAI know what we know and the open source community are building stuff comparable to what we can build anyway. So is there any point in keeping all of this kind of stuff secret? And in the end, OpenAI doesn't matter. They are making the same mistakes we are in their posture relative to open source and their ability to maintain an edge is necessarily in question. Open source alternatives can and eventually will eclipse them unless they change their stance. And what we're seeing here, I think, is that we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of what the open source community will do with some of these models. The big question here is, should Google do what is suggested in this document by this Google researcher and become more favorable to releasing some of its models and its data to the open source community in order to propagate that kind of light in many fires, you know, propagate in research institutions and individual developers to be able to build on top and take these models further to develop artificial intelligence capabilities and to develop the capabilities that these models are going to be able to deliver in future or should it continue to keep its cards close to its chest and work on its own proprietary technology? There is no chance, I don't think, that Google will be involved in any open source community when it comes to these large language models, simply for the fact that it is so close to Google's core business that there is a huge, huge threat to Google's fundamental business of search. Google's long term will be to try and monetize the output of these models in some way, shape or form. It's not hard to imagine and connect the dots between uh, BARD and Google search so that in future when you do a Google search and perform a Google search, you're really interacting with BARD a la Bing GPT. But Bing GPT has had lots of issues, chat shit most of the time, and it's not very accurate because that's the inherent limitation of large language models. But if Google can fix that, put more controls around it and make sure that BARD, as it relates to Google search, is accurate, reliable, responsible, transparent and consistent, then it has something that is worthy people would potentially use that. Don't think they would pay for it, but they would at least use it, which then starts to allows Google to keep hold of its position as the number one search destination in the world. The other thing is, don't forget Google Assistant. It's running on every single Android device. I know that the kind of hype has died down with these voice assistants now, but the only reason it's died down is because that first wave of activity was predicated on the underlying models of these voice assistants being intent-based natural language understanding systems. That means they didn't really understand everything you said because you have to have a specific intent for every single utterance or group of utterances. What large language models give you the ability to do is to have every assistant understand everything you say, more or less, and be able to respond, even if it's not always exactly the response that you want. At least it doesn't say, I'm sorry, 
I didn't understand that. And so there's a lot of different ways that Google could use their, their models and productize them, put them within their products to then increase engagement with Google's products and services. That will be predicated on Google creating a differentiation with those products and therefore requiring that they have some kind of IP or value proposition in their underlying models. It's highly unlikely that Google will just pull down the curtain and say, yep, you're right. We've got nothing different to the open source community. We're doing nothing different to open AI. Our models are okay. They're very expensive. They took us a lot of time. They spend We spend a lot of money on them. We have loads and loads of top researchers in the whole world working on them. But this open source community, actually, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, this guy in his uh, credit card and his laptop's probably got the exact same capabilities that we have. Google is just not going to admit that whatsoever. So I don't think that Google will be involved with the open source community whatsoever. But what do you think? Let me know if you think Google will be involved in the open source community, release its models and become part of the AI community in order to better the use of AI and the capabilities of AI and the responsible use of AI in future for the whole world? Or will it continue to keep its clouds close to its chest and try and develop its own proprietary models and keep posturing about how elite and better it is than everybody else? Let me know what you think in the comments below.